Here's the 16P battery block. It's got 16 magnets. You can hold 16 cells in parallel with this block. Let's go ahead and put them in. We'll use salvage, that was bad, we'll use salvage cells. These have still got the tabs on them. Of course you can use new cells too, but you know for big blocks probably a lot of you guys are using salvage cells. Alright, there we go. And they're all held in there. Nice and snug. <laughs> they sure beat up, aren't they? Okay, and here's the little arrows, and so we line these up with these arrows up here. And there it is, just like that. Okay, if you're hooking these in series, you'd want to use a series connector, and it would oh, it look something like that, and go on and connect to the next one. Um, I take a look at these holes up here and see if they're aligned with the cells and you can slide it back and forth a little bit to line them up. Same with the bottom. Yep, just get it just right. It's not critical, but it's nice to have it as good as possible. Okay, and now we will start putting in the bolts. We each all the battery blocks come with ring terminals. This is a 12 to 14 gauge. You get enough to assemble your battery with. And they also come with um, smaller ring terminals. These are the power terminals. They hold uh, 10, 12 gauge wire. These hold uh, 14, 16 gauge wire for the BMS, the sensor uh, wires, or the um, hobby charger. Okay, and we'll go ahead and put a power terminal on the bottom too. Now for the washers, there's a washer. Again, if you want to put this nut on, just hold it in place with your finger and turn the bolt head. It's easier that way. Washer. Washer. Sure not. Washer nut. Nothing as exciting as watching somebody assemble a battery, right? Washer nut. Washer nut. Okay, and now we'll just Tighten them up with this driver. Oops, there's a ring terminal here. I'm just going to straighten it out with my fingers and re tighten it. I'm holding this ring terminal straight while I tighten the nut on the other side. There you go. That's how fast and easy it is. Of course, you'll probably want to connect more of these to each other, and so that's where you put uh, your threaded rod through and bolt the whole battery together. It makes a very strong battery. These caps are loose. They're designed that way. That's so that you can tighten up the cells, hook them together, and when you tighten up these threaded rods, you won't break the contact with the cells. Here's a nice 16P battery, and we'll go ahead and hook it up to this watt meter, this energy watt meter. We'll be reading the amps that it puts out. This 10 energy is powered by this little battery block here because it needs more than 3.5 volts to run. And we'll be heating up these resistors. 
So let's plug it in and see if the battery block overheats or if the cells overheat. All right, it's plugged in. Tenergy's reading 54 amps, 53 amps at 150 watts. It's quite a lot of power. Resistors are getting warm. I can smell them. Let's check the temperatures. Temperature of the top of the battery blocks case is 89 degrees and the cells are 89 degrees. They're the same temperature. This means that the battery blocks aren't offering any resistance. There any heat that's coming, that's heating this thing up, is coming from the cells themselves. We're still getting that um, 51 amps. But let's take a look at the resistor temperature. 251 degrees. Yep, that's pretty hot. Versus... ninety one degrees and the cells nine ninety one degrees about the same temperature